For this video, I'll show you how to implement a binary search tree, breaking down all the algorithms for it in JavaScript so you can see the potential of such tree with simple examples. If you watched previous tree implementation on this channel, this will feel very different as it works and serves a different purpose altogether, but I will get into details as we go. I'll start off by creating our binary search tree class with a couple private properties and one of them being the root for the tree and compare method, which I'll use to compare nodes in various places. I will also provide the getter for the root and one thing I will need for these comparisons is the comparisons results, things that will tell which action to take according to its values. I'll call it comparison and it's a static getter which means you can access it without initializing this class and all it returns is a frozen object An object freeze here makes sure that nothing can be removed or changed after so it does not mess with things and ensure that values are always the same. It will contain comparison values, bigger is 1, smaller negative 1 and equal is 0 and also create a bigger and equal as well as a smaller and equal that will come handy later on. So pretty much when you compare two node values, you must return one of these. So this binary search tree knows what to do. And if you ever use JavaScript array sort callback, you are familiar with these values since they are pretty much the same values they use. I'll proceed to have my constructor that takes an optional compare function you can provide and I first check if it is passed and it's also a function and set my compare property. Otherwise I'll set the default one and here I compare A and B and return appropriate comparison values. And with this all the setup is done so we can start implementing this tree. First thing I need is the ability to create a node and this node takes a key which is the value of the node and what it does is it return a sealed object using object seal and what this does is make sure you cannot set new things or remove existing things but you are free to change things already set inside and this object has the key and the left and right node set to null. Now let's add a way for you to insert things in the tree and the logic is simple. I go ahead and create a node using the provided key and if the root is null, this is clearly the first node so I will just set the root otherwise, I'll call insert node private method which I'm yet to create but first let's look at the nature of the binary tree. A binary tree is composed of nodes which contain two child nodes, the left and right node and the left node value must be less than the node and the right node value must be greater or equal. So when we are inserting, we need to know on which side to put a node and we do that by comparing the new node key with the current node key. If it's less, we check the left node and if it's no, we set it to the left node. In case the left node already exists, meaning it is not null, I'll compare this new node key with the left node key and check if I should add it on the left or the right side. And we do this until we find the empty slot, a null node and we set it. Pretty simple logic, so let's look at the code. The insert node takes a new node and the current node and it is default to root if it's not provided. I first check if the new node key is smaller or equal using comparison and the compare method and then check if left node is null and set it as the left node. Otherwise, I'll call the insert node again passing the new node and the left node. So it repeats the same thing again which makes this method a recursive method which is a great way to work with tree data structure for repetitive stuff like this. I do the same thing on the right side as well and with that the insert method is done. I'll go ahead and instantiate this and proceed to insert things and I did not provide a compare method because all I am putting in are numbers and the default compare method already works great with primitive values like numbers and strings so I'll go with the default. I'll also console log the root so we can see things inserted. I'll insert 35 that should go on the right of 20 and then 8 that should go on the left and proceed to add some more. And you can check here on the side how these values are making their way into their slots. Pretty cool, huh? In the end, we have what is called a complete tree where all nodes except for the leaf nodes have both of their child nodes. The printing root here makes it difficult to view the whole tree, so I'll create a print method that prints the tree as a string for us to use as we continue to work with this. I call the private print node method that takes the node to print and an optional space count and label, so we can label the node as the left or right node and by default is the asterisk for the root. 
If node is null, I'll just print a string space count times, then label and null since the node is null. Otherwise, I'll print the same thing but with the node key. Then I proceed to call print node again, passing the right node, space count plus two, and r as the label. And do the same thing for the left side as well. I'll first fix this space count I misspelled, and now if I just call print, we see the whole tree as a string here on the side, and it's much easier to follow. Whenever you have a tree, you will want to traverse it, and I will show you four ways to traverse this tree, and since it is a tree of number values, there is a need to print nodes in an order from the smallest to largest, and vice versa. And if you remember how binary tree is structured, you should know that the smaller numbers are on the left, and the largest one on the right. So that makes it easy to accomplish this traversing. Let's first add an in order traverse method that takes a callback. And I call the private in order method with the root and the callback. And the first thing I do is check if the node is not null. And since lesser values are on the left, I'll call in order again with the left node, then call the callback with the node key and call the in order again after with the right node. What will happen is it keeps going on to the left until the smaller number possible, then it prints it, then the node, and then the right node. And it comes back up again, repeating the same thing until it has visited all the nodes on the tree. I'll add a callback here on the calls and test this providing a callback that simply logs the value and we see numbers from smaller to bigger in the console. So to do the reverse, I just have to switch the order of these calls to the right side first and then the left, and it just works as expected. There is also a pre and a post order traversing where pre order prints the node before it prints its child nodes and post order does the reverse. If you watch my previous tree implementation, I spoke on breadth and depth first search and traversing. So pre order will allow you to access a node before it's deep children. So you access the node as you traverse like a breadth first search. On post order, you first check your deepest children before you visit the node itself. And this is like the depth first search and both has their purpose and time of usage. And if we use a pre-order here, we can see that it prints every node as it visits them. When we use the in order and reverse order, we looked for the smallest or the bigger numbers before we started printing. And maybe that's what you want when you, you are searching for a specific node. But I'll show you a better way to search in a minute. Then the post order goes all the way to the leaf nodes and only then starts printing backwards towards the root, opposite from the pre-order. Note that both pre and post order prioritize the left side first, then goes to the right. So now let me show you how you can work around this to search for something. So I'll go ahead and create a search method that calls a search tree private method, which will return true or false, whether you found it or not. And if a node is null, it will return false. And then I'll compare. And if it's equal, I'll return true. Otherwise, I check if the key you search is less than the node key and continue the search on the left side, otherwise on the right side. This is a much faster way to search for things as it switch side accordingly to faster reach the node using the tree structure logic. This is where the binary tree contains its power for search. For example, if I search for six, it will just print true. But let's look at how many nodes it visited for that. So I'll just add a console log on the start for the node key. And we see that it visit three nodes before it reached the node we were looking for. Again, when I showed you how to implement a media file directory, I did a breadth first search to find any files and directories. And that visits a lot of nodes before it finds stuff. Depending on where things are on the tree, it may take longer as the tree grows and will prove to be slow search. That's where the binary tree comes and makes search super fast. And that's why it's used for many search applications in computer science. And I'll show you a few of them on this channel. Now with the search in place, let's add an ability to find the minimum and the max value on a tree with the min and max getter. And you probably know how it will work. I'll first check if the root is null and then return the key of the result of calling min and max node private methods. And this time I'll use the while loop. And for the min node, while there is a node and there is a left node, we we'll reassign and then return it. And similar thing for the max. And while we are here, let me add the last method, which is to remove a node. And for the binary tree, 
removing works differently. In a fast system or DOM tree, when you remove a node, all its descendants is removed as well, and here it gets replaced with one of its descendants if it has any. So for removal, there are three scenarios. First, you may want to remove the leaf node that has no children, and in that case, you just set it to null. Then you may want to remove a node that has either the left or the right child, and in that case, it gets replaced with the child node it has. And finally, you may want to remove a node that has both child, and you must replace with either the max node on the left or the minimum node on the right. But I prefer to use the max value on the left, so let's implement this. I set the remove that takes a key that calls remove node and assign what it returned to root. Remember that if you are removing the root, we will get replaced with some node. So when it is returned, we are assigning root again with that new node. First, I check if the node is null and return null. Then I proceed to check the left side by checking if the key is smaller and reset left node with the remove node result and passing it the left node and key. Then I return the node and I'll copy this to do similar thing on the right node as well. This tool will take care of cases where the node we want to remove is not equal to the node we're checking and we want to continue looking either on the left or on the right side. If it hasn't fallen into those two if statements, then it is because that we found a node to remove and we must check for the three scenarios I explained earlier. I first check if the node is missing both of its child nodes and if so, I'll assign it to null to remove it. Otherwise, I'll check if it is missing the left node and assign it to be the right node. Then if it is missing the right node, I'll assign it to be the left node. And finally, and finally, if it has both nodes, I find its replacement by getting the max node on the left side. And then I'll set the value to be the same as the max value. And we must remove this max node now. So I'll just reassign node left side to the remove node result. And finally, I'll return this node. Now let's remove some nodes. And I'll first remove six, which is a leaf node. We see it is now null. Let's remove four now that it only has left node since six was removed. We can see that two now takes its place. And let's remove 35 now that has both nodes. And notice that 31 is the largest node on the left. And it just gets replaced with 31 when we remove it. For the final removal, let's get rid of the root node. And it should get replaced with 13, which is the largest node on the left. And it works just fine. Now, let's look at those min and max values on the tree. And I'll comment out these remove calls. And min should be 2 and max should be 42. Perfect. Now, the binary tree is not perfect. I have told you how gray it is, but let's say I have a tree like this on the left and let's pretend it keeps growing on one side. And with that, finding and operating becomes slow. And we say that this tree is unbalanced and unbalanced trees are slow. So for the next video, I'll show you how to fix this problem by introducing to the concept of balanced binary trees with AVL trees. For more contents like this, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.